What's up, Explainers? Super excited to have you back with an exciting episode today on Dependency Confusion. Remember when Alex Burson dropped this insane topic two weeks ago? We're going to check out how this entire thing works in Python, and I'm going to take you with me, and we're going to have a look at all the details. So let's check this out. So we are looking at Alex Burson's amazing write-up of dependency confusion. And if you haven't read this piece yet, make sure to do that right after this video. But as I want to dig a little further into Python dependency confusion today, I want to start with an example. And we do have a sample application over here, which imports the requests library, as you can see in the top which is a library for sending web requests. Amazing library, make sure to check it out. And then we are querying or sending a GET request to HTTPS example.com, we're printing the content. And what you're already seeing over here is that my IDE tells me that I'm not satisfying the requirements. So if I'm going to run this application right now, I'm going to get an error that I do not have the request library installed. And how can we do that? So usually in a bigger project, you would have a requirements.txt file. And over here you see right now that I'm telling the application that I need the request library in its version 2.24.0. And usually you would have like a ton of other libraries listed over here. But for the sake of ease for this video, I've only put down one. And now I want to show you how you would satisfy this requirement. So Python comes with a module called pip. Pip standing for Python installs packages. And you can say pip install minus r and specify a specific requirements txt file. What pip is doing in that case, it looks at PyPy, which is the public Python repository for all libraries existing. And it is nothing else than looking up the name that you're asking for in its specific version. And we're seeing the requests library over here right now. And if we look at the release history, there are a couple of versions available, one of them being 2.24.0. So let's quickly remind ourselves that this is the version that I'm asking pip at this point. And I'm going back to my command line and I'm hitting enter and pip right now checks PyPy if it has an entry for this specific requests version. PyPy says yes I do and it comes back and sends me the library. So now if I go back to my IDE, my IDE says oh well yeah now you satisfy the requirement and we do see in our virtual environment over here that we have a request entry right now. And I'm going to run this and what you're seeing is the outcome of a GET request to example.com right below here, right? So everything good, requirements satisfied, everything is awesome. But what if I would need a library that shouldn't be made available to the entire public? So let's assume right now that requests would not be a public library, but like a private library designed by my own company. What I could do in this case is I could say I want to load this library from a private, non-public repository. Usually this would be like an artifactory running in your internal company network where you can download certain libraries from. And I have a little mock setup right now that I want to quickly show you. So I am running my Python HTTP server on port 444 over here. And what we can find over here is just basically a clone of the request library in its version 2.24.0. So what happens if we go back to the IDE and I'm going to delete my request library so I'm not satisfying the requirements anymore. And then I'm going to pip and say, look, I wanna install my non-public request library right now but I have to specify that somehow. So what I could do is using the argument minus minus index URL 
to specify a repository from where I want to load my non-public library. And in that case, as you can see over here, I'm saying I want to load this from localhost port 4444. So let's try what happens if I hit enter. It checks my local repository and it downloads Python requests library in this exact version. And if I'm going back and I'm running this again, you can actually see a little bit of a different entry over here because I've manipulated my non-public version of requests. So right now it says internal library, this would be my non-open source library. So now you have an idea how we can load a library from the public repository from PyPy and how we can load it from like an internal company artifactory. Okay, so let's move one step further. And we are kind of starting to get to a point where it starts to get a little confusing. This is why it's called dependency confusion. And what I want to show you right now is let's go back to our pip command. And I just told you that with minus minus index minus URL, you can specify where you want to download your non-public library from. But what happens if my artifactory or my endpoint is not available? So I'm going to kill my server over here. And if we go back and refresh that page, you can see that we're loading and loading and loading and nothing is happening. So I'm unable to connect, right? So what happens if I'm trying to say, well, pip, go ahead and load that library for me? Well, pip is going to have a look if it can connect and tells me, no, I cannot connect to your repository, to your package index. There is an issue and I cannot download the requests library for you. So this is bad, right? And because of that, there is another argument that you can use that helps you out in that case. So I'm going to kill this for now. I'm going to clear my screen and I'm going to run a slightly different command. So if we look at our pip command, I'm going to change the argument minus minus index minus URL to minus minus extra minus index URL. And what this is doing is that it says, all right, you're specifying your local package repository, your local package index. But if I happen to have a problem with that, I'm having a fallback. And the fallback is I will go to PyPy and I will see if PyPy has a package to offer that satisfies your requirement. So I'm going to hit that right now. And it it says right now, it looks in two indexes actually, and it starts with localhost. And what you see right now is that we're getting the same warning errors all over again. And it does a total of, I think, four or five tries. And if this doesn't work, it gets to the fallback. So let's give this one more second. And there we go. We have no retry left. It says total zero and I'm going to load this from PyPy. So this is interesting, right? So we do have sort of a, a hybrid, a mixture of package repositories where we can load packages from. And if we go back to our IDE, we do see that the requirement is satisfied. And if I am running this, you see that this is not my internal library, but the external one that was loaded from PyPy. And I want to start stressing this out a little bit. I was not putting a malicious package on PyPy to demonstrate this. I was putting down a line saying internal library in the request library that I'm hosting on my local server. And I am using the external, actually public requests library to act as sort of malicious package. So just to make this clear, if we don't see this line, we would have downloaded the public, let's say malicious package instead of our internal one. And this is where dependency confusion comes into place. So this is our problem number one.
Before we're looking to look at all the other confusions that could potentially happen, we quickly have to look at PyPy's tutorial and understand how we can specify a requirement in the requirement.txt file. And if we look at this page, we do see that we can say, I just want to have this requirement without specifying any version at all. We can use the equal equal characters to specify a very specific version, like what we have done so far throughout this video. We can use the greater than or less than characters to say, for example, I want to have a specific major version, let's say major version 1, but I don't really care what minor version I get. And I can use what PyPy calls a compatible version if you use the tilde character and the equal sign you can say, well, I want to have, as you can see over here, for example, 1.4.2, which means that you can get any version of 1.4. So this could be 1.4.2, 1.4.3, and so on. But let's jump into an example right now. I want to I wanna go back to this. So right now I'm only saying, well, I want to get the requests library, the, le the requests dependency, but I don't really care the, which version. So let's have a look at what we are hosting right now on our artifactory mockup. I'm going to reload this, and what you're seeing over here is that I'm currently having only one requests library to be served right now, and that is 2.24.0. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to jump over to pib and I'm going to say, well, install my requirements.txt file. And we're seeing that we're getting version 2.25.1. And this is loaded from the PyPy package index. And why is that? The reason is that the PyPy index has a higher version than 2.24. And this is where we're getting that one served. All right, let's just quickly jump into our IDE. I'm going to run this. Our requirement is satisfied. And you do see down below here that this is the version in the public repository. All right, I'm going to delete my request library again. And I am going to quickly build a version that has a higher version number. So let's go back. I'm going to reload this and you can see right now that we do have a version 3.24.0. So remember, the current highest version on PyPy is 225.1. So 3.24 is obviously higher than that. So let's see what PyPy is doing. I'm going to run pip and we are seeing that we're downloading version 3.240 from my local repository. Sweet. So I hope you're already confused, but let's make this even more confusing. What you're seeing right now is the way to specify dependency with the tilde. And right now we're specifying 2.24.0. Just as a little reminder, that means I am fine with any version that is bigger than 2.24.0, any minor version. So that would be 2.24.1, 2.24.2, 2.24.900, right? Like all those will work. And what I'm going to show you right now is if we have a look at PyPy, PyPy has a version of the request library with the number 2.24.0. Quickly looking at my little artifactory mock over here, uh, reload this, we have 2.24.0 as well. So we're having the same dependency available to our developers. So let's see what happens. I am going to pip and I'm going to run this command. And what we are seeing over here is we're loading 2.24.0, obviously as yes, there is no other choice, but we're loading it from PyPy. So PyPy actually comes first over here which is super ridiculous. And I'm quickly going and run this. And we're seeing that this is the external library. Okay, 
So next up, I'm going to delete my dependency. I'm jumping over here and I'm building a version 2.24.1 that is available in my local repository. So let's go back to pip and run this again. And what we are seeing over here is now that we do have a higher minor version than the one on PyPy with 2.24.1, we actually get back to our local repository again and actually load the library from where we wanted to load it. And if we run this in our IDE, we do see internal library, this would be my non-open source library. So after all those variants that I've shown you up to now, how you can specify a specific dependency. There's only one left, and that is by using the greater than and less than characters. But in order to learn more about that, I actually wanna direct you to my website that I've recently created and set up for you that will come with a lot of blog posts in the future where you can, for example, right now, check out more about Python dependency confusion, where you can read up upon all that stuff that we have seen in this video and it also gives you the result to the question what happens if you use the greater than and less than characters right over here so make sure to check that out apart from that i want to say thank you very much for checking out this video dependency confusion is really confusing isn't it please also head over to my patreon where you can support me because making these videos takes quite some time. If you appreciate what I'm doing, make sure to check this out. And maybe you want to become a charming squirrel. Apart from that, thanks Alex Beerson for bringing this topic to the public once again. Although it's not new, this is still exciting to me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe in the top right corner. Subscribe to the channel. And I will see you folks soon.